Why All Whales Are Afraid of Killer Whales It was a stormy March morning in off Australia's western coast when a researcher, John Totterdell, and his students caught sight of the chase in the water. The scene was a blur. The first thing they spotted was about 20 black and white shapes in the water, a group of killer whales surrounding something. From the boat, all Totterdell could make out was a much larger grey-blue animal at the center of it all. Then they saw the blood in the water. Within seconds, we realized, oh my god, a pack of killer whales is attacking a blue whale. The whale was massive, about 70 feet long, and it was fighting back. But the killer whales, which were only about a third as big, were making coordinated attacks and working together to exhaust their prey. They took turns biting chunks of flesh from the largest animal on the planet. There was a good 10, 12 that were active in keeping this animal harassed, wearing it down. Just tiring it out, Totterdell, whose team recorded the violent hunt, recalled. It went on for hours and eventually, the blue whale got weaker. Sensing their opportunity, two killer whales leapt on top of it, forcing the blue whale under the water until it eventually drowned. The scientists watched as the killer whales ate the larger mammal's tongue first, probably while it was still alive. While killer whales were known to attack blue whales, the team of researchers were the first to ever document a successful takedown, and they've done it more than once, publishing their findings in the journal Marine Mammal Science. Their work definitely shows that killer whales, which actually belong to the dolphin family, are the top predators in the ocean. In this video, we're going to understand why whales are afraid of the killer whales, also called orcas. Let's get started. It's no secret that whales are enormous creatures. But despite their size, they are afraid of orcas or killer whales to give them their scientific name. Orcas live in oceans worldwide and have a wide variety of prey species, including fish, seals, turtles, and other types of sea life. They also sometimes feed on larger marine mammals like dolphins or even smaller whales. This diet makes them hunters with skills far exceed those of other predators in the water. But how do they do it? Sea creatures like whales are at risk of attack from predators who use echolocation, also known as sonar. Orcas produce clicking noises that help them find prey by creating sound waves underwater and seeing the size of an object based on how long it takes for the echo to return. Whales can actually hear orcas before they can see them. So why are whales afraid of orcas? Whales are afraid of orcas because they may kill them by torpedoing from below at high speeds or by ramming their sides with their heads. Orcas have the most prolonged teeth globally and fangs that can be longer than 3 inches when their mouths are closed, making whales defenseless against these predators. Swimmers often worry about attacks by certain marine predators, but beware the bite of a more common animal. The orcas' obsession with tongues is well documented. On several occasions, it has been the sole or nearly the only thing they eat from their massive prey. Orca assaults are incredibly effective, so humpback whales have every reason to be afraid of them. By the numbers, white sharks are a lot more dangerous to humans than orcas are. Despite the name killer whale, there is only one well-documented instance of a wild orca attacking someone. So why are killer whale attacks so rare? One of the first reasons is that orcas don't encounter humans as often. Killer whales are often found in all oceans, but they tend to be found in higher densities around cold, high-latitude regions. These are areas where the water is not particularly inviting for the average beachgoer. In 1972, orca attack was probably a case of mistaken identity, as is the case with many shark attacks. In fact, you don't have to spend long browsing police blotters to confirm that not only are killer whale attacks rarer than shark attacks, they're also rarer than documented cases of swimmers being attacked and bitten by other humans. Granted, that's because there are a lot more humans than orcas around, but that doesn't change the conclusion. In the ocean, you're more likely to be attacked and bitten by a person than by a killer whale. Another theory is that it's anti-predator mobbing behavior a lot of animals mob their predators to rob them of the element of surprise. For example, meerkats will throw sand at snakes. They're not really a threat to pilot whales. The pilot whales might not have known that the killer whales weren't a threat. In other parts of the world, killer whales do feed on smaller whales such as minks, belugas, and narwhals. 
and are even known to chase down larger baleen whales. Perhaps the pilot whales are viewing them as a threat and responding accordingly. When hunting for food, these massive creatures can often be seen traveling in packs or pods using organized hunting strategies to isolate and immobilize their prey while minimizing their own chances of sustaining injuries. For example, when hunting sharks, one or several killer whales may attempt to distract the shark while another killer whale sneaks up from behind or underneath the shark to ram it and flip it over. Once the shark is flipped over, it becomes shocked and unable to attack, allowing the killer whales to attack their prey without the fear of being attacked themselves. When hunting fast and agile prey such as dolphins, killer whales will work collectively to tire the dolphin out until they cannot swim away fast enough to escape. They've even been spotted sneaking up to the beach or an iceberg using stealth and then quickly leaping out of the water and onto the sand or iceberg to surprise their prey and grab onto it before it can react and escape. While other animals don't hunt these marine mammals, killer whales are well aware that some of their prey may try to defend themselves, which could lead to permanent injuries such as injured fins or the loss of an eye. Because of this fact, killer whales are very cautious and methodical about their hunting methods to maximize their success rates while ensuring their safety. Part of what makes killer whales such successful hunters and defenders are the closely knit packs or groups they travel in and rarely separate from. Killer whales are very family-oriented, and when one killer whale successfully captures its prey, the food is often split between family members and close friends. Like with humans, the bonds of killer whales can last a lifetime. These close bonds allow killer whales to work together when foraging and protect one another from potential threats. From sharks and other marine animals, they may put up a good fight when being attacked. Defense Measures While the killer whale is an apex predator, it doesn't mean other species will lie down and give up. In fact, several other species will fight back to protect themselves and their families. For example, female sperm whales occasionally face threats from hungry killer whales looking to steal their small children away from food. To protect their children, the female sperm whales may form a circle around the child, using their flukes to hit any potential predators trying to enter the circle. It has been said that the amount of power that their flukes can generate is enough to injure a lurking predator seriously and may even be lethal. Sharks are also likely to put up a fight when being attacked and, if possible, may attempt to latch onto a predator and trash back and forth to wound and injure the predator. With that said, only a small percentage of shark species are known to hunt large prey and form a proper defense. What about humans? Wild killer whales have never killed a person. There have been encounters resulting in injuries, but these are not only exceptionally rare, but most likely the case of mistaken identity. Over the past 100 years, there have been a total of seven noteworthy incidents. On a few occasions, orca used hunting strategies to either upturn boats or at least attempt to. Its techniques used on ice floes to get to seal prey. Finally, a man was once dragged underwater for 40 seconds by a killer whale. The animal wasn't trying to drown the man, but instead steal crayfish he'd speared and put in a satchel tied to his arm. While attempting to steal the bag, the killer whale pulled the man down with it. How do whales avoid orcas? When resting at the surface or spending a prolonged time at it, many whales face into the wind and keep a vigilant eye out for orcas. Whales also often swim away from the areas where orcas have been sighted or killed another whale. In some cases, groups of baleen whales will stay very close to each other when resting so that they can utilize each other as watchmen. The group will quickly dive to avoid attack or move away from the area when orcas are seen. Baleen whales don't have the speed to outrun orcas, but can dive deep enough to escape an ambush. In several documented cases, baleen whales were found with killer whale tooth marks on their flukes and flippers, suggesting that they had been the victim of a failed predation attempt. The most detailed observation and descriptions of killer whales hunting baleen whale prey have come from Antarctica and New Zealand. Adult blue whales are also believed to be among the orcas' prey, although no instances of predation on this species have been witnessed. Whales are typically more at risk when young or weak due to health problems, injury, or parasite infestation. When sick individuals are caught, they are typically killed in minutes by groups of orcas who test the waters, with their teeth before ripping large chunks of meat off the prey. Whale deaths caused by killer whales have been confirmed for dolphins, pilot whales, minkies, sea whales, 
and gray wheels. 